Spirit Island is a cooperative settler destruction strategy game for one to four players that was designed by R. Eric Royce and published by Fabled Nexus in 2017. In Spirit Island, each player controls a unique spirit that is trying to spread its presence across the land and protect the native Dahan from the invaders. Players will spend energy to use their powers to try and fight back against the invaders and terrorize them by instilling fear. The invaders, however, are trying to spread across the island by exploring, building towns and cities, and ravaging the land on their turn. This process follows a specific order, but which type of land the invaders explore each turn is randomized by a deck of cards. Once the invaders ravage, build, and explore, then all the cards slide down so the land they explored this turn will be built upon next turn and finally ravage the turn after that. As the invaders ravage the land, they will kill off the Dahan and blight the land which removes the player's presence. If they blight a land that's already blighted, it will cascade and you will have to blight another land around it. You lose the game if you ever run out of blight or if any one spirit ever removes their last presence from the board. You win the game by destroying all the invaders including explorers, towns, and cities. By raising the terror level by instilling fear, you can also win by destroying only the towns and cities. If you reach the maximum terror level, then you only need to destroy all the cities. To set up the game, place the invader board on the table. Place four fear tokens per player in the fear pool. Shuffle all the fear cards and build the fear deck by placing three cards down right here. Then place the terror level three placard on top. Then put three more fear cards on there and the level two tear on top. And finally, three more cards go on top of that. Put the rest of the fear cards back in the box. Take all the invader cards and separate them into three piles, stage one, two, and three. Remove one card from each pile, and then stack them with one on top, followed by two, and three on the bottom. Place the deck on the invader board here. For the basic introductory game, place five blight per player onto the blight space. For the regular game, choose a random blight card, place it with the healthy island side facing up, and follow the instructions on the card. Now that the invader board is all done, let's set up the island. Randomly pick an island board for each spirit that you have in the game and set them up like so. One player, two players, three players, and four players. If you are playing solo but using more than one spirit, then set up the board for that many players. Each space on the island board shows a symbol to indicate initial setup. Place Dahan on any space showing this symbol. Place towns on spaces showing this symbol. Place cities on spaces with this symbol. And finally, place blight tokens on spaces with this symbol. Note that this blight doesn't come from the blight pool on the invader board. You take it out of the bag and remove the rest from the game. Shuffle the minor power cards and put them within easy reach. And then do the same with the major power cards. Then put energy, cities, towns, explorers, and Dahan where each player can reach them. Next, each player chooses a spirit. There are eight available in the base game and four of them are recommended for the introductory game. The back of the spirit boards gives a summary of how they play, shows a difficulty rating, and shows their strengths and weaknesses. After choosing, take the four power cards associated with that spirit. The back of the card will show a picture of your spirit. If everyone is playing an introductory game and chooses the easier spirits, then instead of the major and minor power card decks, each player will take a power progression card instead. Look through the major and minor power decks and pick out the ones shown on the card. You can tell because it will have a matching color symbol in the top corner. Stack them in the order shown. Next, each player is assigned one of the island boards as their home board and follows the setup instructions on the back of the spirit board. Place a presence token on the spaces listed under setup. Each player starts on their own board, but once the game starts, anyone can place presence anywhere and use their powers on any space. Now flip your spirit board over to the front side and place the rest of your presence tokens on the presence tracks. The left space of each track will be left blank. The final setup step is the invader's initial action. Turn over the top card of the invader deck and place an explorer on each space of the given type. In this case, we drew a sands card, so we're going to place one explorer in each of the sand spaces on all of the game boards. Then slide the card over to the build space and you're ready to play. Spirit Island is played over a series of turns, which has the following phases. Spirit phase, fast power phase, invader phase, slow power phase, and time passes. 
In the spirit phase, each player chooses one of the three growth actions. You must do all the actions shown, but may choose the order. Let's go over all the icons now. This icon means you reclaim all your cards. As you play your power cards, they will go to the discard pile, and this lets you put them all back in your hand. This icon means gain energy. Energy is used to play your power cards later in the phase. This icon means add presence to the board at a range of X, in this case 1. Take the leftmost presence marker from either row on your presence track and add it to a space on the island. Since the range is 1, you may add it to a land up to one space away from one of your existing presence markers, like so. This icon means gain a power card. If you are playing the introductory game with the power progression cards, just take the topmost card and put it in your hand. If the back indicates that it is a major power, then you must remove one of your other cards from the game. In the normal game, you can choose to take a minor power or a major power. Major powers require that you remove one of your other cards from the game, while minor powers do not. The card you remove can come from your hand or your discard pile. When you gain a power card, draw four from the deck and keep one, adding it to your hand. Put the other three cards into a discard pile for that deck. After choosing your growth option, you gain energy equal to the rightmost uncovered energy value on your presence track. This is in addition to any energy you might have received from growth. Next, play power cards equal to the rightmost uncovered number on your presence track. You must pay for each card as shown on the upper left. Each power is slow or fast as explained later, but you must pay for all of them now. After the spirit phase is the fast power phase. Each power card with this symbol is considered fast and everybody resolves them now. Players can do this at the same time but talk to each other in case the order matters. Powers can resolve in any order the players choose. If you do not want to resolve a power you played then you can choose to skip it entirely. Each spirit also has innate powers that are shown on their board here. If an innate power is fast then resolve it at this time. Innate powers require elements to activate. The cards you played this turn both fast and slow have these elements listed on the left hand side. These elements can also be revealed on your presence track. If you have enough elements shown to satisfy an innate power, then you can activate it and treat it just like a power card. I'll go over the most common powers later, but follow the instructions and carry out the action. Once everyone has played their fast powers, we move on to the invader phase, which is more procedural than the others and has a number of sub-steps. First you check for blighted island effects, then you resolve fear cards, then the invaders ravage, build, and explore, and finally you advance the invader cards. Let's go over these now. If you are playing with the Blighted Island card and it's flipped over, then do whatever the card tells you up at the top. If you are playing without it, then you can skip this step. Next, we resolve fear cards. During the game, you will generate fear when you destroy towns and cities. You can also play power cards with this symbol that will generate fear equal to the number indicated. Move that many fear tokens from the pool down. When you run out of fear tokens in the pool, then flip one fear card and move all the tokens back up. This generally happens as you resolve powers and destroy cities, but you wait to resolve the fear cards until this step in the invader phase. Because of this, you might have more than one card to resolve. Just go through them top to bottom. Fear cards are divided into three sections. You resolve the section corresponding to the current terror level. You start at terror level 1, which is printed on the game board. This shows that to win the game, you need to destroy all explorers, towns, and cities. Everything. After your third fear card is revealed, the terror level will go up to 2, and you move the divider to show this. Now to win the game, you only need to destroy all towns and cities not the explorers. After the sixth fear card is revealed, go up to level three, which means you only need to destroy all the cities to win. And if you ever manage to reveal the ninth fear card, then you instantly win the game. So for each fear card you've earned, you'll look at the effect for the current terror level, one, two, or three. You'll do that effect and move it to the discard pile. You'll do this for all your earned fear cards. And once you're empty, we will move on to the next invader step. Now it's time for invaders to fight back by ravaging the island. On the first turn of the game, you'll skip this step because the Ravage space will be blank. After the first turn, check the land type on the Ravage space. All invaders in these spaces will attack the land and the Dahan. Each invader type does a different amount of damage. Explorers do 1 damage, towns do 2 damage, and cities do 3 damage. They also have that much health. The native Dahan do 2 damage and have 2 health. So add up the number of damage the invaders are doing. In this case, we have a town, which does 2, and an explorer, which does 1, for a total of 3 damage. First, they damage the land. If they do 2 or more damage, then you blight the land. 
Take a blight token off the game board and put it on the space. If players have presence there, then you destroy one from each spirit on that space. The presence is removed from the game completely and not returned to your spirit track. If the space you just blighted already had blight there, then you cascade and add another blight token to one additional space adjacent to it. You get to choose which adjacent space to add it to. Blight can cascade more than once, so try to avoid that. After damaging the land, the invaders will do the same amount of damage to the Dahan in that space. For every two damage, you must destroy a Dahan. So in this example, the invaders do three damage, which kills one Dahan and injures the other one. After you've removed any killed Dahan, any remaining will fight back. In this case, our surviving Dahan will do two damage to the invaders. We can choose to destroy the town, which has two health, and leave the explorer, or we could destroy the explorer and do one damage to the town. To show the town has taken damage, we would place it on its side. It makes more sense to destroy the town, so that's what we'll do. Don't forget, when you destroy a town, you generate one fear, and you get two fear when you destroy a city. Once you've gone through every matching land type and resolved the invader's ravaging step, then they will build towns and cities. Check the land type on the card here and go through all matching spaces on the island. If there is some type of invader already there, then they will build a town. If there are more towns than cities before you do that, then they will build a city instead. Next, flip over the top card of the invader deck to see which land type they will explore in this case, jungles. For each matching space on the island, if it's next to a town, city, or water, or already has a town or city, then add an explorer. Once that's all done, discard the ravaging card and slide all the others to the left. This means that the land type that the invaders just explored will be built on next turn, and then they'll ravage it the turn after. It's a simple but effective AI system that escalates quickly. Note that as you progress through the invader deck, you might reveal cards with multiple land types and ones that indicate coastal, meaning adjacent to water. After the invader phase is the slow power phase. Each power card with this symbol is considered slow and everybody resolves them now. Also resolve any slow innate abilities you might have. Once that's done, the turn is over and time passes. Discard all the power cards you use to the discard pile and clear damage from all cities, towns, and invaders by uprighting them. Okay, so we've gone over the bulk of the rules, but we haven't really looked at the power cards, so let's do that now. The name of the card is here, the energy cost to play it is here, this is the speed, this is the range, and this shows the targeting restrictions. The left hand side shows the elements, and the middle of the card shows the effect. Some cards also have an optional effect shown at the bottom, which you can only use if you have the indicated elements. We've already gone over the cost and the speed, so let's talk about the range. Most cards target one land space, and this shows you how far away that land can be from one of your presence tokens on the board. Zero means you must have a presence token on that land, and one means that the land must be adjacent to one of your presence tokens. You might also see this symbol, which means it must be that many spaces away from a land you have two or more presence tokens in. Two presence tokens on the same space is called a sacred site, and some spirits and cards require it for powerful effects. Most cards can target any land within a specified range, but some cards require a specific terrain, like this one, which requires a jungle or a wetland, or they can specify whether the land has invaders or not, like this one. There are also cards that target spirits. This symbol means you can target any spirit, including yourself, while this symbol means it must be a different spirit. The effects on cards are variable, and there are a ton. The general rule is one land, one turn, one use. You target one land, you only get the effect for this one turn, and you can't pay for it multiple times to use it more than once. All right, so let's go over some of the common card effects now. Defend X means both the land and Han take that much less damage from invaders. Destroy means you remove it from the board and generate fear if it was a town or city. Remove and replace effects can remove it from the board, but do not generate fear like normal. Push means you can move the indicated pieces out of the target land into adjacent spaces, and they can go to different spaces if you choose. Gather is the inverse of push, and means move pieces from adjacent spaces onto the target land. They can come from different adjacent spaces, but they all move onto the same single space. Every card in the game is unique, and after a couple plays, you'll get more comfortable with the symbols and wording. One last thing I wanted to mention is that elements are not used up. 
So if you have innate powers and power cards that require the same elements to activate, then you just check to make sure you have that many symbols showing on your cards and board. You don't have to keep track of elements getting used up. Also, if you have enough elements for your second or third innate action level, you actually get to do all of the actions, including the lower levels. The exception is if the action uses the word instead, in which case you do not do the earlier level. Now let me reiterate the different ways the game can end now that you know all the rules. If you ever run out of blight on the invader board and you have a blighted island, then you follow the instructions, which usually says you lose. If any spirit has no presence left on the island, then everyone loses. If you need to draw an invader card and there are none left, then you also lose. To win the game, you need to check your current terror level. At level one, you need to destroy all the invaders from the island. At level two, you need to destroy all the towns and cities. At level 3, you need to destroy all the cities. And finally, if you go through all the fear cards, then everyone immediately wins Spirit Island. Alright, and that's how you play Spirit Island. I know this is a super long video, so I'll keep my conclusion short. If you've made it to the end, please consider subscribing and give this video a thumbs up so others will be more likely to find it on YouTube. Spirit Island is awesome. We love it so, so much, but I will warn you that it is brutally hard especially at first when you are trying to learn the different spirits and don't really know what you should focus on first. But this game rewards repeated plays and the interaction between different spirits gives it tons of replayability. I'd like to end by mentioning that there are a ton of ways to make the game more challenging. There are adversaries, which are basically different AI with special rules so they act a bit differently than in the basic game. Each adversary has six levels that get progressively harder. You can also play different scenarios, which change the rules and win conditions. And lastly, the flip side of the island board shows a thematic map which is apparently harder and less balanced. If all that wasn't enough, there are two additional spirits available on Greater Than Games website, as well as the Branch and Claw expansion, with another two spirits, scenarios, and gameplay elements. With this much content, I don't think it's possible for the game to get stale or too easy. So that's it for me. Let me know in the comments what you think of Spirit Island. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing for future videos. If you want to check out more of my videos, just click the links on the screen and maybe you'll find a new game to play. All right, guys, with that, Michael Skeleton is out.